All right, so brief uh, overview of the electrical. So um, this is the total system I do with battery backup and just gonna briefly run through all the different components, especially this this uh, battery backup blocker uh, setup I use. Um, so uh, starting off, we have the root combiners um, for all of the windmills, um, pretty standard you know, tree. So this is all the input that you would get from solar panels or windmill, any sort of generation here um, goes to these. And then that immediately goes to two branches. Um, and this first branch uh, branches off the total system power that I'll use, which right now is set to 300 for the sum of all of the systems that are used. Um, this next um, branch out goes into this uh, second branch here, which branches off two, which as you can see goes to the blocker. And this goes to the, pass the block pass through part of the blocker. Um, and so essentially, if the system can produce at least 302 power, then that means this block pass-through is going to be um, activated, which means uh, this will not be passing through any electricity. And then if we kind of trace backwards from what's happening here, um, this is getting power from the sum of all of the batteries. So over here, I've got my second tree of root combiners that comes from all the batteries, and that then goes into the input of the blocker. Um, which is not going to be activated so long as we're producing 302 power from the sum of all of the wind turbines. Um, and then the output of this um, uh, this blocked um, battery backup goes into an OR switch, and this OR switch is either going to get power from all those batteries if um, the main system, the main power production is offline, or it'll be getting uh, the 300 power which is branched off here. And just to, to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and um, deactivate um, all of the input power and this by disconnecting this I'm basically simulating every single windmill being destroyed and now note how this blocker right now is blocking pass through but I deactivate this now suddenly this is getting 200 power in which is then going into this um, this OR switch and now everything's running off these batteries and you can see that they're draining and so I have 200 electricity to run all my systems um, and then if you were to replace your windmills you know Bam, this is blocked again, block pass-through is happening. We're only getting the power from this um, branch out here, the 300. So that's how this works. And there's a demonstration of the failover um, system. Going over here to complete the um, setup for the uh, batteries, we um, looked at this input. So this is uh, this tree contains all of the power output from every single one of the batteries, since that's gonna be used for the battery backup failover. Um, and then for inputs, uh, we have just a standard uh, tree of splitters here, and that tree of splitters comes from the output of this branch. And so first we talked about the 300 power that's going to go to the main system, then the two that's going to activate the blocker, and then whatever else is left, so in this case 35 power that I'm not using for all those other systems, that's going to go into the splitter tree. Um, and this goes into the power input for each of the batteries. So I'm just kind of trickle charging these, these batteries with whatever power I'm not using to drive all my primary systems, which even if this is like only 35 like we're looking at right now, that's usually enough um, to, to slowly trickle charge these things since you shouldn't be using your battery failover unless there's like a RAID scenario. Um, um, so that's everything um, in terms of the battery failover and uh, charging the batteries and the output of the batteries. Um, and then the only other thing to look at is the main system branches. And so those come from the output of this OR switch, since again, this is either going to be producing power directly from the windmills or the battery failover. Um, and so that um, power out from the OR switch um, goes into this first branch. Um, and then from here, I just do system level branching. So this first one contains 161 power for all the auto turrets. And then we always do SAM as number two. And then you basically go from the most important system to the least important system in these series of branches. And that way, if you ever to only have enough power for you know one or two of these components, you're always prioritizing the most important first. So if you know half your batteries are blown up and all your windmills, you might still have enough power to, to keep some auto turrets online, and that's probably your first priority. And then SAMs, and then whatever else. Um, and so this is these are always system level branches. And I typically, if I'm giving power to somebody else to you know, build automation or, or industrial stuff, you know, I'll typically just have this go to another branch in some non-secure, unimportant part of the base, and then they can, you know, branch off from there with the splitters and everything they need for that system. Um, so this is just like system level branches, and that's pretty much it. Um, and I typically do the, you know, sh turret shut off with a smart switch right here, just to make sure um, you have to be auth on TC to be able to activate this uh, switch. And, you know, when p new people are added to the team or you need to up ammo, you got your switch right here. And that's pretty much it.